being that they've given us this tremendous nudge, right? They say use De Moivre's theorem, okay? Now just have a look at this line first, okay? Have a look at the right-hand side. Do you see, do you see that even without having been told, use De Moivre's theorem, there's a big fat clue, in fact there are two big fat clues that tell you, that should sort of signal De Moivre's theorem based on this right-hand side. What are the two clues? Look at them, yeah. Uh, the angle is times by n. Yep, very good. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, good. So, so these are the giveaways, right? We know our quote for De Moivre's theorem is, if you have a number like this, and you raise it to the power n, then you're going to raise the modulus to that power, and you're going to multiply the arguments by that power. Okay? So, yeah, that's right, that's right. You're, you'll get used to it. So, someone, someone will look over your work and say, hey man, you spot that with two n's, and I'm like, no, no. That's an n theta, thank you very much. So this has clues in it that tell us. But when you look at this left-hand side, um, what's the problem? <laughs> it's, in, it's in rectangular form, okay? So our first, like, you remember I said to you, okay, you've got to think about how you go through this. The first thing you obviously have to do is put these into polar form so you can work with them. So let's do that, okay? Um, consider. Let's have a look at uh, 1 plus i. I'm just going to write 1 plus i. Okay? Now, 1 plus i, where is it? Get an image in your mind. The 1 means go to the right, a unit. The i means go up. Okay, so you've got that, that little sort of triangle in your, in your head, right? I want to convert this into polar form. So if I've got to the right, up, there we go. What's the modulus? This is 1, 1, root 2, right, root 2? So there's the modulus. What's the argument? Pi on 4. Yeah, it's just pi on 4. Oh, right. Of course it's pi on 4. Okay, good. So we're headed in the right direction. So let's write that down. Okay, now that's what 1 plus i is, so I converted it successfully. The reason I converted it is so I can use Demogras on it, right? So let's do that. I'm going to raise this to the nth power, which means what happens to the modulus? also gets raised to the nth power. Okay, this is actually not, you remember I said it's intimidating, but it's like, oh, you do a few steps and you clearly are headed in the right direction. Here's the modulus raised to the nth power. And then here is the argument and it gets multiplied by m. Okay, yeah, you're with me? Yep. In exactly the same way, also, one minus i, okay, think about where that is. Uh, you still went one unit to the right, and then you go one unit down, right? So you've got the same triangle, but, but flipped over. So one, one, same modulus, but what's the argument? Negative. It's negative pi on four, yeah? Okay, so let's, let's go through this. This is still root two. This is cos of negative pi on four plus i sine of negative pi on four, yep. You can go ahead, you can apply Demarra's theorem to it just like before. I should have said that, by the way, by Demarra's theorem. I'm going to raise this to the nth power. Do you see this is not actually that bad at all, right? It's not that bad at all. Um, you've got here minus n pi on 4, another minus n pi on 4. Okay, so now tell me what to do. Come on, you've got all the pieces there. Add the 1 minus i. Okay, so there's a couple of different things, and I think I sort of have to do both of them. Um, I'm clearly going to add these things, right? Clearly going to add them. Right? So I can say, therefore, the left-hand side of this result that was being given to me is going to be this plus this. Do you see that? So I'm going to have this one out the front. I just want to do the straight substitution. Uh, this one, after it. Mm -hmm. Now look, after you've, oh, minus, as soon as you write this, have a look at where you're headed. Have a look at the result you're headed towards, okay? What's going to happen? What has to happen? Factor out. You have to make uh, Yeah, a few things have to happen. Well, number one, this root 2 to the n, uh, it happens twice. Well, it had better happen twice, so I can factor it out. Let's do that. Then what's the next thing that has to happen? What's the gl glaring obvious thing that's in this line but not in those lines? There's no signs. Do you notice there are no signs? Of course there are no signs, because what's going to happen to this guy? Sine is an odd function, right? So I sine of negative n pi on 4 is the same as minus I sine n pi on 4, right? So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll get that out there. n pi on 4, I sine n pi on 4. Now that's not the only thing that we use symmetry of functions to take advantage of. 
This is a minus n pi on 4. This is a regular n pi on 4. So for what reason can I switch this? It's an even function. Very good. Are you starting to get, like, we've used this many times. This is why we go on about odd and even functions earlier. People are like, who cares about these things? Like, who cares if it's got this symmetry? Like, why bother classifying it? Because you can use it, right? You see, it's very useful. So here we go. I've got a cos n pi on 4 plus uh, minus, rather. N pi on 4, right? So I'm just hurrying because of time, but you should write here, you know, because, like, the reason why I can do this is because of the symmetry of those functions. And then you can see what happens, right? Uh, cancel, cancel. Cos n pi on 4 plus cos n pi on 4 is 2. Cos n pi on 4. Are you happy? I'm not even going to write that line because it's just that line. 